This episode is going to be all about Xamarin.Forms behavior. So with behaviors, you can attach functionality to a user interface control without having to subclass it. You don't have to have the source code to that control. You can just take it, uh, write a behavior for it, and you can add functionality. You can influence how it looks, what it does, what it smells like. You can do all those things. In this episode, we're going to see how to consume a behavior, but also how to write one yourself. So make sure to pay attention. Oh, whoa, whoa. Stop, sorry, stop, 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 stop. Uh, what? Did, did you, did you subscribe yet? You did now? Okay, continue. So first, let's talk a little bit about what behaviors actually are. So behaviors let you basically add functionality to a user interface control without having to create a subclass for them. So you can just have a control like a simple button right here that we're going to see uh, how to attach a behavior to. You can uh, put that behavior on there and you can hook into that button and um, enrich the experience for that button. But that can be for any user interface control. So examples of what you can do with that is like uh, on an entry, implement some kind of uh, validation. So check if a valid email address is entered or if whatever is entered is a numeric value. Um, and whenever it's not, you can, um, I don't know, make the text red to notify the user that the um, input is invalid. So that's some of the things that you can do. In this video, we're first going to see how to use a behavior, how to consume one. So we're going to add one to this button. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time on to uh, look how a behavior works under the hood. So what is required for you to implement your own behavior so you know how it works. So let's start with this simple layout. This is just the file new Xamarin Forms application. Um, I've modified it a little bit for our scenario here. Uh, mainly I've added a button here. Um, and what you would normally do is add the clicked event right here. And that would add a new event handler where we can go to in our code behind. See here it's created. And here we can then um, simply do some things with the variables or the controls that, that we have in here. Uh, but if you're going to use MVVM, you don't want to have things in your code behind like this. So we're quickly going to remove this and this. Uh, so for the clicked, I know there is also a command here on this button, but you might come across a, a user interface control that does not have the command counterpart, uh, which is what you want to use when you're using MVVM. So to overcome that, we have uh, a um, event to command behavior in the Xamarin community toolkit. So I've installed that as a NuGet package here, but there might be other packages out there which have behaviors that do the same thing or behaviors that do totally different things, or you might write them yourself. Uh, but we're going to use for this example, the Xamarin community toolkit. And in that we have a button. So we have just a button behaviors. That's something that is uh, a property on every view. And here we can add behaviors uh, that can be one, but you can also do multiple. So let's start here with um, a behavior. So we are going to uh, have to add this namespace right here, not this one. Um, I will let IntelliSense fix that in a minute. And then we go to event to command behavior. That's something that's in the community toolkit. So like I said, let's just go to the IntelliSense. And what this is going to do, it will add a namespace right here on the top, uh, which tells it what this piece translates to. So where to find this class, the event to command behavior. Now, by doing this, we get the IntelliSense here too. And one of the things we have to set for this behavior is the event name. Um, so the event name is going to be the event that we want to substitute with the command. In this case, it's the click that we've just saw on the button. Um, and we are going to translate that to a command. So you can also do a parameter in there um, where you can specify a, a certain object. But we're now going to just do this command. And I'm going to do a data binding here to the click command. So that's how you would do it in a MVVM pattern. So what's going to happen now, this clicked event on the button is going to be um, hooked up by this behavior right here. And whenever that is fired, it will uh, send it through to the click command right here. Now at this point, nothing will happen. 
um, because we haven't hooked up the um, page model yet. So let's do that right now. So when you're using MVVM, you want to uh, have a page model for each page basically. So we have the page model right here. I've implemented a little bit of code that implements the iNotify property changed. Um, if you've worked with MVVM a little bit before, then you probably know that this is required to let the UI know that a value has changed and it has to update itself. Um, I will make a video. Let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in and to know how that works exactly. I will make a video of that and, and how to make your life a little bit easier. Um, but that code is in here right now. So, um, so, you know, just trust me, this works and focus on all the rest. Um, so what we're going to do is add a couple of properties. So if you've noticed here, uh, back to the page and we have a label that's going to show the increment. So how many times we've clicked the button and that has a data binding to click count. So let's create a click count first. Uh, note that this has to be a property. So um, you want to have a property here because if it's just a public field, the data binding won't work. The data binding looks specifically for properties. So make sure it's a property that has um, cost me a lot of, well, hours is maybe exaggerating, but it cost me a good chunk of time um, whenever I realized that I didn't use a property. Um, and the other thing that we want to do is have that command. So um, have that command here and I named that the click command. So here we go. Um, actually, I want to have this in a private uh, variable backed because I also need to call the property change thing. So I think there is a refactoring thing here to convert it into a full property, something like this. Uh, so the get can be this, that's fine. But the set will be something with a body here we go, the click count will be value, uh, but also, whoops, also it will do the notify property changed. There we go. So because I don't set, um, as you notice, so I, I'm not going into the pro notify property change thing uh, in, in, in depth here, but a little thing that you might notice is that um, you have to specify the property name uh, normally. Uh, but if you don't do that, um, you could just specify this caller member name and it will automatically fill it with this click count thing right here. So you don't have to think about that anymore. Uh, that's a nice little trick you get for free here already. Uh, so now we just have to hook up this click command right here. So what we're going to do is in the constructor, we're going to say new command and we can just say with a Lambda expression right here, and we're going to say click count plus plus, so it should increment nicely. Um, the last thing we need to do, we have our main page model here, but we need to let the main page know uh, which page model to use. So we're going to go back into this main page right here, and we're going to set the binding context, uh, which is going to be um, the property that sets it to the page model, and it knows where to look for its data binding properties. So we're just going to say, okay, new main page model, like this, um, stop the application for a little bit because I changed a lot of code. So it needs to be redeployed and let's wait for this uh, a little bit to become ready. Here we go. Uh, you already see that it does something because here we see suddenly the zero clicks, which wasn't there before. And now when I click this, you can see the clicks being incremented. Um, and I have not implemented any click event. So this is all going through to my command right here. I don't know if this works because of the Lambda thing. Oh, it does. So you can see it, it hits my command uh, without ever having to uh, being bothered with, with a event. So that's how this behavior works. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you want to see how this behavior is implemented, let's switch over to the actual source of the Xamarin Community Toolkit. So here we see the actual source of the behavior that we've just uh, implemented and just consumed in our other application that you can see here on the right. Um, so this event to command behavior inherits from base behavior, which is something in the Xamarin Community Toolkit. But if we go in here, you can see it inherits from behavior and you can also specify um, the type that this behavior can be attached to. So uh, this can be anything. You can also make it very specific to one control if your behavior uh, does something for, for one uh, 
uh, control specifically. So like the sample that I mentioned earlier, if you want to have some kind of validation on a entry, uh, you want to make this specific to an entry. Uh, but this base behavior can be attached to any view and a view being in this case, a user interface control. Um, so this does some stuff, but if we go back to the event to command behavior, that's a little bit uh, clearer. Um, so you can see we have a couple of bindable properties. So that's the event name, the command property, um, the command parameter, and some event arc things. Uh, don't worry about that right now. Uh, but if we scroll down a little bit, then here we see the most important bit. So whenever you override from the behavior, uh, the behavior being a Xamarin forms thing, you will need to implement these, uh, which are the unattached to and undetached from. And what you can see happening here is we call the base first because we don't know what's happening in the unattached uh, that we're inheriting from. We want to make sure that runs. And what we then do is register event, uh, which is implemented down here. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get that runtime event uh, on the control that we're attaching to uh, with this behavior. And then whenever we do that, we create a delegate um, so, um, um, and we are going to loop that through to the event handler, to the command uh, that we've also specified in our behavior. So that way we catch the event and we put it through to the command that we've specified in this behavior. Um, now, unattached to is ran when the control is created, when it sees that there is a behavior attached. So it will uh, run this piece of code so you can hook into that and set everything up. And the undetached from is basically the other way around um, where you can just say, okay, unregister the event in this case. So you can do everything to uh, clean up your resources, clean up all the things that have to do with this behavior because the control is going to be destroyed. So here we unhook the event handlers and that's that. Now this event to command behavior is just one of the examples. So if we look into the community toolkit, um, we have a lot of behavior. So there's also the animations. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. Basically everything on the control that you're attaching to with this behavior is something that you can influence. Um, so you know what, while we're talking, let's just fire up this little sample right here, uh, see what happens. And we have a number of validators as well. So the email validation numeric, um, URL validation, so you can check if something is a uh, valid URL or not. Um, so, and we even have the mask behavior. So there's a couple of awesome examples in here, what you can do with behaviors. Uh, they're already implemented for you. So you just have to consume them in your application by adding the NuGet and doing it that way. Um, but let's have a quick look at what you can do uh, for example, with these behaviors. So here's the sample app that's attached to the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And then we go to behaviors and we have this uh, event command. We've just seen that. So let's go to the animation behavior. And we have attached behaviors to these buttons. And I don't know what this all is, an entry. But if we click it, you can see this has some kind of fade animation. I think this one will do a complete backflip. Um, this will do another flip. Uh, this will shake. So whenever you go to the entry, it shakes. So that's also something nice whenever you're using it in a validation scenario where the um, the entry is maybe not valid and you do a little shake. Um, so this fades as well. Um, so this is all the things that you can do with, with the animation. Uh, the masked one is also very cool. So here you can have this masked input. So um, here we want to have a credit card number and it goes automatically. So whenever I start typing, you can see this little space is coming up here. Um, you can also do it with um, d dashes. So whenever I start typing here and you can um, force the user to, to enter more valid uh, things in here or make it more clear, more readable. Um, and that's all things that you can do with behaviors. And now that you know how to write behaviors, you can go out and implement your own, hopefully uh, contribute them back to the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And that's how you do it. Easy peasy, isn't it? So make sure to comment on this video. What is the behaviors you want to see in the Xamarin Community Toolkit? Which are the ones you're done writing with yourself and you want us to do it for you? Um, please comment below, like, subscribe. You know what to do uh, and I'll see you for my next video.